thank you for that good introduction. Uh, my name is Amruta. I work in Walmart Labs as a senior engineer. Uh, today I would like to talk about uh, Redux in iOS. Uh, before starting, uh, we live in an ocean of apps. There are apps which do everything. There are apps which are used for ride hailing. There are apps which are used in e-commerce. We use apps in healthcare. We use apps even for games. So there is a varied kind of apps present around us. So a single solution to build these apps is not, uh, is not going to work. So what we need is we need different solutions which can be applied like the same the same uh, the same MVC MVP or Riblet which might work for one app might not really work for another app. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what really suits my app. What is the problem my app is trying to solve or what are the pressing problems my app is trying to solve. There might be sometimes multiple problems. You might want to actually do better routing. Also another problem is my company is really huge and I have like a huge set of developers working on it. How do I build my architecture or design so that all of us can work parallelly without really disturbing the other people. So there are a lot of things which come into consideration when I'm choosing a pattern or an architecture for my app. Today I'll be talking about Redux which is one such pattern which was actually used or started in JavaScript which we can definitely use. So we have to go beyond what is just happening in iOS or Android and look at the other you know software programming languages and what patterns are coming there and what I can use within my app. So we all that's what I said we already have MVVM, we have Viper, we have Riblet so why am I even talking about Redux I can just go and use it. So Redux is, uh, is, is, is a pattern which I can use when I have to manage a lot of states within my application. Redux provides for an elegant way of handling states which might be given in a certain extent uh, by MVC, MVVM but not as good as Redux does it. So first I have to figure out whether my app needs, my app has such a use case. Do I have many states which need to be handled? Is my app getting complex? Is MVVM or MVC or Viper uh, able to solve this? If it is not then we have to look for other options. So one option I can say is Redux. So what is Redux? It's a unidirectional data flow paradigm inspired by Flux. So currently whatever architectures or I can say most of the architectures or patterns which we use is bidirectional. So one object asks something to the other object and the other object is actually giving back something. But what Redux does is it, it does this data flow basically the data flow which is happening it happens in one direction. It was first introduced in JavaScript um, and it's an elegant way of uh, state management. Okay, let me start off with what are the components in Redux. Of course, there is a state. What is a state? A state is nothing but a struct which maps onto a certain state of your app. For example, I'll give a very simple example of suppose you have an app which is a light bulb app. What are your states going to be? It's going to be on and off. So that's, that's the struct you will build for state. Next component is called as an action. Again, action is nothing but it's going to be a structure which will actually tell what needs to be done. Like when certain action is done by the user or some internal component, what state change has to happen. So that is that is actually stored in uh, in, a, in a structure called action. Third and very important component of Redux is called as a store. The store actually uh, is a, uh, I can say it's an object which stores the state of your entire application at that particular point in time. No other component within your application, will let it be the view, the view controller or anything else stores the state. So store is kind of uh, the single point of contact within your app which will tell you what is the state of your app. Next very important component is a reducer. What the reducer does is it takes an action and your current state and maps it onto another state and it's a totally pure function. It cannot have any side effects. It can't make any API calls. It can't go and modify any global states. Okay, all this feels like a little disconnected. Let me tell you how all of this works together. So we have a store. Uh, initially when you build a store you have to tell it what is the initial state. For example, I gave a light bulb application, your initial state might be off. So I build a store which has a off state initially. I may have views or view controllers which might give actions. So the action may be uh, on button is clicked or off on and off is done. So when an on is done the view actually passes on to passes on the action to the store. What the store does is it passes it out to the reducer. Reducer is a pure function which will actually take the current state 
and this new action and deduce the new state which has come up. And the store now has the new state. What the views and other components which are there within the, within the application do is, they actually subscribe to the store for any new state changes. So the views of the view controllers, as soon as the store has got a new state update, it just broadcasts all of its state changes to the views and the views deterministically just change their UX. So such some principles uh, which we need to remember is, the store is going to be the single source of truth. The moment you start putting states within some other components, this pattern won't work. The store has to, ha has to be the single source of truth for your state. State is read-only, so the state object which I mentioned earlier, it, you cannot really change it. It has to be a read-only object. And the views cannot stay in the state directly. So views are just going to act as these, uh, like similar to pure functions, but they are going to actually map deterministically to a state. So if state 1 show red, state 2 show blue, they are totally dumb of what is happening across as a business logic. All they know is this is the state I have got and this is what I have to show right now. This is a very, very simple example uh, uh, depicting how the whole of the system works. I, you have a state, you have an action, and you have a subscriber. By subscriber, I mean all the view controllers or any other interactors or other models which are trying to listen to state changes. Uh, then you have an app state. Here I've given a very simple example of a counter. There are two types of actions which can come in, which is an increase action and a decrease action. Let me ex explain how the store looks. The store has a reducer, it has a current state, and it has an array of subscribers. You in every time uh, a store is initialized, you need to pass it an initial state. A very important function here is a dispatch action function. What the dispatch action function does is, it takes an action, it passes on that action as well as the current state to the reducer, and a new state has been passed back to the uh, store. Now what the store does is, for each of its subscribers, it just publishes this new state so that they can change their UX. Subscribe is another, I mean it's a subscriber function which will just append it to the subscriber. This is a basic, it's not a production level example, it's just a basic example to explain what exactly happens inside. Now, uh, this is a very important function, is the reduce function. Uh, it takes an action, it takes a state. Uh, it has two cases, increase action and decrease action. Whenever there is an increase action, the counter is increased by whatever is the increment. When is the decrease action, uh, it is decremented. And this new state is returned back. I hope this is making sense now, what is happening. So, the view sent an increase action, the store will pass it to the reducer, the reducer makes sense of it, returns a new state. This new state is published to all the other subscribers which are there within the application. Okay, so other than these components, they, uh, Redux also has a very powerful concept called as middlewares. These middlewares are very similar to the ones which are there in Express, but uh, they do a little bit different from what Express does. Middlewares sit in between action and the reducer. So before the action is actually going to the reducer, we pass it to the middleware. Let me explain with one small example. Uh, all of us have like a login flow within the application. Uh, suppose this is a login middleware. So what it does is, it, get, it got an action called as login request. So as a login request comes in, there are two things which you need to do. You show the spinner and you do the API request. So it, it actually passes out two more, function, uh, two more actions. So when you do the API request, again you might get two states, success or failure. So in case of success, you have to do two things again, which is hide the spinner, set token, hide the spinner and set show error in case of failure. So this middleware has actually taken one action and split it into multiple actions and only the outside, the last layer which you can see is broadcasted to the outside reducer to make sense out of it. So the outside reducer gets hide spinner, okay, it, it, uh, sorry, the outside views get hide spinner, they have, they, all the views which are there within your application who are listening to this will go and hide the spinner. Set token, all the components which are actually supposed to do this action will do that action. So that is how your middlewares work. So uh, not only that split action, you can do a lot of things with middlewares. Middlewares basically whenever in your application you have to do any kind of async work or any kind of work which is going to give a side effect, we put it into a middleware. 
and usually it will be uh, middleware is based are based on flows so you have a login flow you have a checkout flow you know for flows flow wise you can create middleware so that you have separation of concerns again so there is you can do filter you basically you are getting many actions you are actually filtering out you don't want to do actions for all of them you can write middleware to filter you can write middleware which can compose these are actually called action processing patterns you can aggregate actions what we did here was split so one action comes in and we split it into multiple actions you can do map you can even enrich uh, so suppose you get an action and a middleware can add on some more data on top of that action and then pass it on so a lot of things can be uh, done with middleware middleware give a lot of power to redux okay so coming to the conclusion like reducer is highly testable and maintainable why do i say this is because like 80% of your business logic is now in the reducer and what is the reducer it's a pure function so every time any input is given to the reducer it gives the same output so if you have 100% tested your reducer you have actually tested most of your business logic business logic is not handled by view controllers which most of the patterns or architectures which we are trying which we are using right now the end goal is how do we try to get out code out of view controller and put it in some place which we can test that's what we are trying to do actually redux does it in a very beautiful way it takes out whole of the business logic out of view controllers now the view and the view controller are totally deterministic they are totally dumb to what is happening across so their only input is a state so error state it shows an error view list state it shows the list that's it it knows only that yeah the third point is uh, basically the same the view is again deterministic another very very uh, interesting thing which can be achieved with using redux is hot reloading now what is hot reloading many a times we have a uh, use case within our application wherein uh, you know your app got killed or the user shut down the app but when he comes back he has to be again in the same state maybe he was checking out he was in the fourth step how do i get that all i need to do in redux is uh, your store can just save whatever states and actions which came to it and just initialize it whenever you initializing i told initialize it with off right it, you take all of those state and initialize your initialize your store now your app is in that particular state where the user left it this uh, this is a very powerful concept which is used even in react they in fact internally use this react and redux are very closely uh, you know plugged because redux does this very very easily next is easy debugging why can we do an easy debugging any time at any particular time in point in time uh, in a redux app it's like a blueprint if i just console out all my actions and all my states whenever i whenever there is an issue all you need to do is go follow that path so there is action 1 action 2 state change state change okay something went wrong here it's very easy to debug imagine what happens to us we are building apps with like so many view controllers which are having types of delegates like this controller is calling this this is calling this and then there is delegate callback debugging becomes very difficult when the application becomes really complex but with something like redux where it is giving like a footprint of what happened at this particular point in time debugging becomes really really simple and i have actually used it and i have actually reaped the benefits of having this yeah uh, no more protocols and delegate pipes i think that's the biggest pain which i feel i have faced is you know one controller delegating to next 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 and then something coming back so this bidirectional flow is a really it's a big pain because when you're trying to debug very complex cases wherein like for example if there's a ride hailing app or like you know e-commerce app there so many things keep happening at the same time it gets very difficult if you get lost in the flow but if you have something which can you know at every point in time log what happened within an application i think that's of great help so uh, before ending i would like to say is that redux is not for every app you know certain apps can just run with mvc certain apps can run with just mvvm so it's it's a decision which i have to make sometimes if you go ahead and use redux in an app which it doesn't need it's like unnecessary overkill you're over engineering it and it's i i would not recommend that because it involves a little bit of learning curve second is it also involves a little bit of boilerplate code 
So we have to look at the trade-offs. So if my problem is so huge that I am okay with writing more code and maintaining this and uh, whenever a new developer or a person enters my team, I am okay with explaining that to him, then go ahead with it. But always make a conscious decision where just because there is something hyped up or a new thing coming to the environment doesn't mean it fits my app. Or just because something is really old and used for 10 years doesn't mean it will fit my app. So always take time to decide when I'm building an app what really works for me, uh, like what are my challenges and how do I solve it and whether this pattern solves it. So next time you have an app which you feel has to maintain many states, please give a try to Redux. Thank you.